Good evening. It's Cindy Fodor here with Stamp the Love and it's Make It Monday. Hope you can join me. And I just realized that I forgot to turn my phone down or off. Let me just um, get in here. Make sure we're transmitting. And hopefully you can join me tonight. I have so much fun, uh, fun stuff to show you. Um, having trouble finding the videos. Okay. Maybe it's not transmitting, but we'll see. I did want to check something here real quick. All right. <laughs> there we go. All right. Hey, Linda, good to see you. You popped on right quick. Hi, Debbie. Great to see you guys. Thank you for joining me. Ah, I have so much to show you guys tonight. Now, I will tell you um, that two of the projects that I'm doing at class this month, I showed on our team, um, our team What's Up Wednesday. So um, I'll show those towards the end so that if you don't want to watch those, you don't have to. Um, but they are two of the projects for class this month. So going to show this. Hey, Lori. Hey, Talara. Good to see you guys. I have the new catalog. And I understand that if I have it in my hand, I am allowed to show you the cover of it. So that would be the first thing that you get to see as soon as I change the, the camera over to the other screen. So yeah, I'm going to just give it a few seconds to let everybody pop on here. But anyways, have you guys been having a fabulous time with this weather? It's just been amazing. A beautiful Easter day and today was gorgeous out. Um, I was stamping. No, let's see. I was stamping some. I worked this morning in the, um, in my stamp room and then about an hour and a half ago, I came down and did some more work. But I, in between there, I've been working on taxes, trying to get this out of me. Horrible, horrible thing to do, right? Has to be done. And I'm very, I put things off. So that's what you get, right? If you wait till the end of the year, then you have it all to do. But that's okay. I'm, I work good that way. <laughs> all right. It looks like. We have everybody maybe that's able to pop on right now. So let me first announce the winner from last month's or last week's drawing. And that was for, if you remember, it was for the star elements. If I can get a good picture here. And then um, I, there weren't as many comments this time because it was, um, it was going through the catalog and seeing things that were retiring. So Debbie, Debbie Buchanan, there's a lot of Debbies. Debbie Buchanan was the random winner of that. So thank you guys for all commenting and sharing. Um, so Debbie, good. I'm glad you got to spend some time out. Yeah, your catalog came good. Um, so yeah, Tosh was out this evening working in the flower beds. So I'm excited. And Joel mowed the yard for the first time this spring. It was really getting bad just in some spots. We have a lot of, um, I don't know what it is. I think it's, it's sort of like a garlic grass or something. Uh, it's just real, real dense and, uh, it grows really high. So that needed mode. So it smelled so good out there anyways, but I was having fun stamping. Wait till you see. Um, but I'm going to get started. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I need to tell you about? I don't think so. Um, but type in a friend's name if you want to remind somebody that they'll get a notification that we're on and that we're going to get started and let's go. Okay, so this is the cover of the new catalog and I will tell you that this pastel look is, even though I can't show you the inside of the catalog, if you're not a demonstrator, you didn't get yours yet, um, but you will. If you are a customer of mine, you will definitely get one as soon as I have them in my hand. This was just my copy because we have an on tour event this week. And um, this was our gift, early gift for that. So that was pretty cool. 
anyways, so this pastel look is, is carried through in all of the pages. Um, not all the projects look like that, but the pages are very, um, very light colored and I'm guessing it's an in thing right now, but it's very pretty. All right. So let's see. I want to start. Oh, my magnets are sticking to everything. I want to start with this card. Um, this is using the welcoming window stamp set and dies. And it's in the, I think it's in the, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it's in the regular catalog cause I've, I've liked it for a long time. I can't, no, it's not. It's in the January to June. See, I have this new system. Isn't that cool? That helps my brain a lot. Uh, so that's in the January to June. I believe it might be carrying over. I can't remember. I think I saw this in the, in the new catalog. So, um, that's really cool. This is such a beautiful set. I hope that you'll see that when we play with it here. Um, so let's get started. The colors that I'm using are, I'm using pool party for this little background look with the, um, sponge brushes. And then I'm using Bubble, Bumblebee and Pretty Peacock. Now, I do know that Pretty Peacock is leaving. However, I had this card planned way before that list came out. I mean, I knew that was going to be going away. But, you know, last chance is to use uh, this gorgeous color. And I, I do believe, I've been warning you that they were going away, so you should grab them. And I'm sorry if you didn't. But, um, yes, we did have two years with those and it definitely was not enough time. Okay. And I am using some markers as well for this part. So um, I'm going to use Old Olive and the Pretty Peacock marker. And I'm also using my Stamparatus uh, because it's easier for me for a class to cut out all these little pieces and <laughs> I'm sorry, Linda, that you don't have a new catalog yet, but I guess you didn't do on stage, huh? What I like about this is because this isn't a detailed die for the flowers here, I can cut out two of these at a time with the, a regular basic white cardstock, and it's really much quicker. And then I can just pop it in here and color it. So let's go ahead and start with that part, and then I can get the Stamparatus off the table. I guess I don't need the mouse, do I? Okay, so I will just sort of briefly go through how I set this up. So I I cut out a piece here, and I try to keep it down from the edge and away from the edge here. Probably could have brought it down a little further. Then I took the stamp, and I just laid it upside down in here, and I actually hold it up to the light if it's photopolymer so that I can see through. And I look through the bottom side to make sure that the edges all look really, um, really good approximated is how we would call it in the medical term terminology. And then I stick it carefully down in the corner up against both edges so that I'm not moving the stamp. And then I just close the lid and catch the stamp right where it's at. Now let's see if I lined it up. I didn't check it. Um, but I don't like to do this on camera just because there's no way that I can show you without having somebody holding a camera for me to, to show you how I hold that up to the light and look underneath it. Now I can put in my die cut piece right here and I'm ready to color over here. Usually I start with the lightest color and really it's hard to say which is the lightest. So I'm just going to start with the old olive and I'm going to fill in everything that, um, oh shoot, I'm going to fill in all of it. I totally forgot that um, I could have done an, uh, mark, or an ink pad with this. I was thinking the flowers were in here, but they're a separate stamp, and I just need to grab that out. So that makes it even easier. Once I have this stamped, I will, have, I will be able to see exactly where the other stamp goes. So I really didn't need the marker, and I will change that out for my class because I don't need to use that. Press that down, peel it off, and voila, there, there it is. Now, 
just going to get this out of the way. I really don't want that ink all over my new paper. And let me pull this out. This is, um, this is the stamp, I think. I just have to grab the white, right one. You see there's two little bunches of flowers here. This is the one that I used. And it looks to me like this matches the one that I used on my card. So we'll grab that. Let me just change this out for a second. And I'm going to go ahead and just ink this since I had my marker out here. Again, there was no need to use the marker because um, there are two separate stamps here that I'm able to use. Now I'm going to have to get my head sort of in the camera here so that I can see where I'm going. There you go. How cute is that? Um, I just love that little bunch. And I tell you what, when you put the pot with it, it's even better. I'm going to wash that off so that I can change out my stamp here. All right, let's go ahead and stamp the pot. Now, I did not put that on the, on the Stamparatus, but I may do that for everybody because it, it definitely will be easier to line it up. Hoping that my head isn't knocking my camera out of whack here too bad. That's not terrible. All right, I'm going to leave that open because I do need to use that for the bricks. All right, so let me just get that out of the way, move our pieces over here. And um, I will show you that this is embossed with the brick embossing folder, sort of to carry over the theme of the bricks. And it looks like we've embossed it a little crooked. So not really a way to fix that. Anyways, you'll have this. All right, I'm going to glue that down. I just made that a quarter of an inch smaller on the two sides uh, so that it would fit on here. And the only purpose, um, if you're looking at this going like, okay, she's doing that the same color. I don't want a different color. But when you're doing embossing, you almost have to layer a piece on top because if you don't, if you emboss the front of the card, the card will be all bumpy and lumpy. So um, if you're going to, if you're going to emboss the whole piece, you almost have to add a second piece on top. Okay. Otherwise it just doesn't look great. All right, let's get this done. Um, do you need a piece of scrap paper here? I'll use my retired list to, to work on. And I'm going to use Pool Party, like I said, and we're going to use the blending brushes and just going to get a little color off here. I think my pad is pretty uninky, so it'll take me a second to... I want it so that it looks like my window is open to the outside, so we have some blue sky coming in. You can see how uninky my pad is. Now it is a light color, so light colors are always going to take you a little longer to get the desired effect. I could have used Pretty Peacock, but then I would have been really worried about spots, um, blotches on my sponging. So Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see that and I'm finished with pool party now I'm ready to I'm gonna lay my window on here and sort of get an idea uh, this window die I just wanted to tell you explain you probably can't see it but it has little um, embossing in it so it has it has extra detail as well as this little shelf or um, ledge has like a wooden embossed image in it and that all happens when you run it through the die cut really cool love how they did that so that's going to go there so my bricks are going to go over here and 
I'm probably going to stamp them just a little bit off the paper about like that. Are they not cool? Um, you could fill a whole card with this. However, I just wanted a touch of brick and I didn't want it to detract from the, the biggest part of my design. So I didn't add much more than that. I'm going to go ahead and close this. We're finished with that. And we're ready to start. Now the window, I just used some green glue. You could, um, you could have, I could have put paper on or uh, our adhesive sheets on the back of the paper before I die cut it. That would have been probably a really smart idea, but I did not do that. So a little bit of green glue, really keep it light. And I need to make sure I keep this up here high enough. Got lots of things to add down here. All right. Thank you guys. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, uh, Karen, Lynn. I'm not sure who all I said hi to. So great to see you guys. So happy to have all of you here. And I am going to add dimensionals to the little shelf or window ledge, depending on which side of the window you're looking at. I think I got that a little close to the edge. Okay, that's not too bad doesn't want to stick stay on there and then we'll just place that here now we're ready for our pot and that's also going to get a dimension I'm going to put a, a larger dimensional on that so I can just stick one on there and that's going to sit right here on the window ledge okay now, before I finish putting the flower on there and the saying, I'm going to go ahead and add this to my card so that it's a little easier to put my adhesive on. And um, I'm, I am copying this from somebody. I don't remember where I saw it, but it was, it was just a cute look um, with a little, the coloring is, is from her. I changed up some things, but um, she did have it over to the side and I don't often do that, but I liked it as opposed to a centered piece. So um, when it's your card, you get to do whatever you want to with it. You have artistic license. So I'm using my artistic license today. I'm putting it right on the edge of that layered piece. All right, now we're ready to add this and I am going to put dimensionals on this as well. And I think I'm just going to put a large one right there because it's going to actually lay on the pot. And I want plenty of my pot to show because I love how that yellow um, works with the peacock and the, and the old olive. So I want to, I definitely want that to show. Now my card sample, I had used the saying, wishing our paths crossed a little more often, but I plan to have two sizes of paper for everyone because this set also has a Mother's Day saying in it and I thought that this would make a gorgeous Mother's Day card as well. So I am going to add a Happy Mother's Day to this card and then I can give that to my beautiful mama for Mother's Day. I'm trying to be careful where I stick this other one because um, I'm going to put it up here because I don't want it to hit the shelf there. And I think I want it to go under the flowers. Something like that. Okay. And that is finished. Um, you, you certainly could add some embellishments if you like. I like it just as it is. Um, it's sort of an understated, but pretty, pretty card. I think I hope you like it and let me just clean these really quickly so I can throw them all back in their case. And I did stamp the thing, so I didn't need to use that one. All right. Let me get rid of that. Oh, and I did use this punch for the tail on, on that thing. I didn't use it on the, the thinner one, of course. Okay. All right. The next one 
is this card. And some of you who are on my team will remember when we did our one of our What's Up Wednesdays, I did show you how to do this card. And I am going to just try to flip through it really quickly. I'm not going to put this card completely together. Mm, excuse me. I am using um, a little bit different background paper. This one, I believe, is Pool Party. This is Mint Macaron. Uh, I think that they're going to look just as pretty. What I had to do for my class is you only get four sheets of, of this one design in each color in a pack. So I did buy several packs, but I, I usually have cut about 30 for a class. So um, I think you can see that even though that green is different, that it's still going to be a pretty background with the Bermuda Bay cardstock and the black. Okay, so let me just show you how to create this part. I'm not going to show you the rest of it because the rest of it's pretty simple. I will show you this. Um, the stem goes like this. And then what I did with the leaves is I laid the leaves on, on the stem and then I just put the block right on top of them so that once I stamp this, I can just stamp this right over top of it and I've got my two leaves stamped. Even though they come separate, I was able to stamp them together. Okay, I am using Bermuda Bay for my tulip. And for this card, you will need several tulips. Let me find my tulip stamp. Did I not get that out? Oh, here it is. <laughs> right in front of me. Okay, so I used, I used one for the back. I used three other ones folded in half. So you'll need four of these. And I don't have my mat down here, but that's stamped okay. So I think I'll keep going. My photopolymer mat, that looks really good. I'm pretty happy with how nice they turned out. Now this one I wouldn't even have to stamp because you're not going to see it, but it's sort of nice to go ahead and stamp it. Then you can pick your favorite three out of the four that you stamped. Um, if you messed up one, you can use that as your background piece. And then I think I did sponge the edges of that. And I'm going to try it without once and see how it looks. Now, if you look at the punch, you're going to see that I have to start from this side. Because if I started over here, I would actually cut out the next tulip. So you just look at your punch and you, and it tells you exactly what to do. So I'm going to line that up. It's getting stuck on me. And then I can just keep going because now this piece over here, this leaf part is just going to cut into what I have punched already. I apologize if I'm turning it more towards me so that I can get it lined up, but you, you know, the, you get the idea, right? Okay. All right. We're finished with that. Got some scraps here. Let me get rid of those. Now the, what we need to do is fold three of these in half and we're going to fold them towards the design. And they do match up fairly well, so it's pretty easy to do that part. And while I'm doing this, I will explain that I did use the ornate die. And I would want to tell you that my helpers and I have, it takes us quite a while to cut those. They are, they are not... Um, they don't, they cut great on the first couple, but they don't like to be used over and over again. So they are a little tricky. And I do put a piece, I probably should show you that, although I didn't bring that in with me. I do put a piece of parchment paper on top of my cardstock. Let me, let me just explain that. So I don't have that die in here, but pretend that this is the die. And this is the cardstock that I'm cutting. I would place a piece of parchment paper here and run it, put the die on top and run it through. When I take it out, 
I I push out the card that I cut, but I try to keep the parchment paper in there. And I keep it in there all the time. I just tuck it back into the design so that um, it sort of pre it sort of helps you not need to use, you know, we used to have the precision plate. And that was really, really hard on your on your um, machine because it really made a tight fit. It was great to cut um, because the paper didn't shove up into the design of the die. Um, I can grab a die here to sort of explain that. So when you have, and you can picture all of these little designs, when you have that indent, your paper wants to shove up into there and you have all those little pieces shoving into that indentation. But when you have a piece of, piece of parchment paper, or sometimes I even have to put two depending on how, how deep it has gotten. Um, and that helps that paper just to pop out a little bit better each time. I just want to tell you parchment paper over wax paper, um, something to do with like the waxy buildup that wax paper will give and parchment paper does not do that. All right, so I have glued two sections and I didn't hold it tight, so it's not quite, um, I have two glued together. I'm going to go ahead and glue my other, my third one onto that. This time I'll hold it together. Look how nicely that lines up. You really want it to line up perfectly so that it looks, looks so much better. Um, I think it would be fun. Let's try it this time. Let's try four. And I'm going to just punch one basic one. I'm thinking that might give a really cool look. So let me try that. While I'm holding that, let me grab the punch and do one more. I'll just do a plain one for my base. And now what we do is just open this up. I'm, ooh, I'm thinking I like that a lot better. So now I'm going to just turn it like this and I'm going to go ahead and put my adhesive on here, my glue. And it looks like I have a hunk of something on here, dried glue. So let me just get rid of that. Don't need that sticking on there and lifting everything out of the way. You want enough, but you don't want it messy. I'm just going to press that down in. I actually really like that. If you compare the two, I I love this extra in here. So I think we're going to be doing that for my card. And you see, I didn't sponge the edges of this and I think it's still very pretty. Um, so you could sponge the edge or not sponge the edge. I wanted to do both so that you could see the different look. All right. So I'm going to stick that there just so you can see the finished project. Now I did use the holiday rhinestones. I just love the colors in here. <laughs> you can see I need a few more. Um, but they have some pastels that go really nicely with this. So I did use those on that card. All right. So four plus an extra for the base. If you like that look. Okay. All right. I'm going to hurry on to the next one because I, after I finish this next one, I have some other things that I want to show you and I don't want to keep you all night. So, all right. The next one is using a retired product, retiring product, and that is our shimmer paint. And I'm going, tonight I'm going to use the uh, champagne mist. I love these and I'm really sad that they're going I like to put them in a spray, one of our spritzers with some alcohol and you can spritz your project. There's so much you can do with it, but it's going away. I don't, I'm, I apologize. I did not check today. Wow. That's a well-used piece of paper. Let's turn that over. Um, I didn't check today to see what has retired already and, and is not available. So I apologize for that. Um, but if you go to the website, to place an order, at least on my website, you will 
you will not be able to pull up items that have already retired or that have already sold out. All right, let me just grab my paper here. So I did use, oh, there's another product that's retiring. And this is um, the old world paper embossing folder that I used for this. And what I did was I just took a little bit of the shimmer paint and dumped a little pile of it onto a piece of plastic. And then I have a piece of a sponge. I don't want to waste that. So I'm going to just wipe off that lip. And then I'm going to just smear this out a little bit and use it to fill my sponge. And then I'm just going to wipe this across. And I'm okay if it catches all of the all of the blue paper behind, but I really want it to catch the ridges, especially want it to catch the ridges. And I just love I just love how this old world paper looks like the ocean waves. That was a happy accident. Don't you love happy accidents? Okay, I've used all of my stuff. I didn't want to waste it. So we figured we might as well use all of it. And now we can put that aside to let it dry. But look at that shimmer. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. Now I do have, I have my two ships, my two sailboats. And this one I cut out for everybody. So they will ink it in here. Um, and again, this one is a rubber mount, so it, I lined it up a little bit differently. I still looked underneath, but of course you can't see through it and look at the light. So I just look at the edges and try to make sure that they're all even around here. And then I lay the paper down in here with the stamp in it and then just close this and grab the stamp. Now I can, again, I can cut two of these at a time and... Of course, I can't stamp two at a time, but cutting, it takes a lot of time. So it's nice to be able to do that. All right, I should pay attention. I have so much to show you that I'm not reading all the comments. I promise I will go back and read them. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them, okay? Okay almost perfect. All right. Now I did not do the other one because I will show you why in a second. Let me set that one aside. I will do some coloring on this one. Um, but for the big sailboat, I want, I'm going to stamp it a couple of times because I'm actually going to cut out this mast part here. So let me go ahead and I and I cut it very close because I didn't want any edges. And I figured since I'm cutting the mast out anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and have everybody cut the whole thing out. So I'm going to stamp it twice. I'll do it this way so I can save paper. All right. Now I'm probably not going to finish this whole thing, but I do want to show you um, how I did this. And it's been a, a little bit, so I'm hoping I grab get the right colors here. So I'm using uh, Seaside Spray because that's the color of the paper. Again, they're retiring, and I apologize if you don't have those. Um, but you could use any color here and use the same color here. I did that so that when you look at the boat, it looks like you're looking through those lines. And that it on the back, you know, you're just seeing the, the uh, sea in the background, see your sky in the background. And this is the light color. So I'm just going to fill that in. I'm not going to worry too much because I'm going to cut this out. So don't have to worry too much when you're coloring this to, to not get on the mast. But I act like I know what I'm talking about because I don't, I don't know see I don't know sailing at all. So I think it's called a mast. I apologize to you seafarer fairs if I'm saying the wrong thing. Let me go ahead and color this in a while. All right, I think that's good. And yeah, I think that'll be all right. 
and I think I grabbed the wrong gray. Let me look here. Yeah, this is smoky slick. I wanted I wanted gray granite, but I think this hopefully will be okay. Just to add a little bit of color to the boat. Didn't want quite that much, but there you go. I will definitely change those out. <laughs> uh, the tip of that one's, as you can see, I put tape around this one. The tip is bad, but the, the ink is okay, so I can still use the other end. So I really should have just used this end because I could have controlled where it was going a little bit better. All right, so... The next thing I need to do now is just cut out these pieces right here. And with our snips, I'm able to get right in there and just really get the detail. Now this one, this is, if, as you can imagine, this is going to be very tricky. I was able to do it. We'll see if I can do it on camera. So I need these two. And again, I'm going to come up here and I just, I just love that how, when I can get this nice thin look. So let's see if I can cut that. And let's finish this one. All right. Now, the last thing I need to do is just quickly snip around this, and I am going to leave um, sort of the little ocean waves on the bottom that you can see there. And I can just take my markers and color that in so that it, um, it fits in with the blue of the ocean but you can see those little lines on there I think that really helps to get the movement of the ship to show that um, but I think it's really cool that when you look at this other than the shimmer you don't really notice that it's a separate part so just because I'm coloring it about the same color as the paper is okay all right now we have all these little pieces here. Let me get rid of the pieces that we don't need. All right. Now, I'm going to use the edges of, well, looks like I already used some of the edges. But I want this shape here. So I'm going to lay this on here. And I'm going to try to get a little bit to come up to uh, come up here. So I'm going to use this edge of my... Oops, that's not what I wanted to do, but that's okay. Let's see if I've been able to... It's probably going to end up showing just a little, but I think that I can cut that a little bit thinner yet. So again, I'm just using the edges. I never waste anything. Um, you could also use our, our foam sheets and... Um, cut any size that you want. So I think I might be able to to trim this a little bit better once it's on here. <laughs> I know you probably think I'm crazy, but I really wanted this um, this sharp edge to be raised completely on the on the ship on the sailboat. Now, I do have this spot down here to cover, and I had snipped this off by accident, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut a piece of that, and we'll go ahead and stick that on there, and then I can trim that up a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to stick this one on the boat. Peel off the backing. Start down here where we have the most, most room to line up. And my, uh, my stuff is showing there a little bit, but I don't think you're going to notice it too much as long as it's not too tacky. That would be the worst part. All right, so I have that one other little piece here. Let's go ahead and use that. 
we'll stick that down here at the bottom and I'm going to just angle another, um, whoops, everything's sticking to my scissors now because they're sticky. All right. I just want to come in here and get another little narrow piece that I can stick in here. And then we'll just snip that off the top. Okay. So now we've created our sails on our sailboat. And they just have a little extra character to them because, um, because we took some time with it. Um, you can see here that my blue is darker. So what I'm going to be doing is when I go to lay this down, um, that lighter blue was too light. So I will come in with the darker seaside spray and just, um, I should have checked that before, but I'm just going to come in with that and try to darken this a little bit in here so that it matches with my background a little bit better. And I probably won't be able to do that in here without messing something up, so I'm not gonna even chance that. But I can at least get this part done so that it coordinates a little bit better, okay? So we've got that one, and then we have another ship here somewhere. Oh, here it is excuse me and then the little saying I used um, the die from the set and it's just so cute I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this but there is actually an embossed part right here so that you can bend this down and it actually looks like a 3d banner that is actually actually a cut in there so that you can actually bend this down and create that look of a 3D banner. And you, I think you can see it here on my card. So I'm just stamping the thanks on here um, because that's the only saying in the set that fits that. So if I can find my set. Oh, the congrats fits too, I'm sorry. But I probably use thanks a little bit more. So um, did I pull that out already? Yes, I did. So here we go. We'll ink that up. And it's a little easier to stamp it when it's flat, but I did already fold it up for you. There we go. So that's it for that card. I'm not going to completely put that together, but I did put a layer of um, Misty Moonlight behind it so that um, it sets, it has a, just a little bit of dark shadowing behind the, the blue, the yeah, this, this light blue, you know, the color I told you, but I can't think of it now. Okay, so that's it for that one. Let me scoot that away. Now, the last thing that I want to show you, let me see how, I, I will be done in, I promise I would be done before nine o'clock. All right, so those are the classes for the month. Now, I will be sending an email out. Um, if you're not on my email list, make sure you let me know that you would like to be so that you know what dates that you could attend. I do have a class. I have several classes here at my house morning and evening, and I have a class in Chambersburg at this point. Um, and I also hold classes in Mount Airy. Um, we haven't started back there yet, but anyways, um, so you'll be able to do these cards at class. Um, my classes go like this. For a minimum $35 purchase, you can get, you can make these cards. Now, you can also earn them by mail, where I'll send you the cutout pieces. And you can, uh-oh, you're having trouble hearing me. Hmm. Uh, I apologize. I didn't change anything. Hopefully my internet's working okay. Is anybody else having trouble hearing me? Maybe when I was turning around to put stuff away, maybe I turned away from the mic. So I'll, I'll try to keep my, my face towards the mic better. Um, but anyways, so you can earn these projects for free if you um, place a $35 using the code that's on the screen right up here at the top. Um, you can see the code right there. Use that host code and then you will get these cards this month for free. Okay. Um, the other thing that you will be getting an email about, um, 
probably by the end of this week because there's a very short window of time where you can uh, purchase the, this class that I'm going to introduce to you. And it's not completely designed yet, but um, I am collaborating with one of my team members. Um, some of you know Barbara Brocker. And we're working together to uh, bring you a class with our flowering cactus set. Uh, as you know, I have loved this set since it came out, and I've used it uh, for several different things. But I want to, before this goes away in June, I want to make sure that you guys have a chance to get this. Um, so as a demonstrator, of course, you have a chance to purchase it. And so I just want to show you really quickly some of the cards that are going to be in this set. Um, this is a little gift bag. And then there are going to be several note cards and a box to fit the note cards in so um anyways that's just a really really quick sneak peek um, again i will be posting that um, sending that in an email to you um, i just wanted to show the some of the colors that i'm using with that um, i will be posting that by the end of the week um, we are going to offer this as a special class uh, projects will all be cut for you and there will be two additional classes, one that each of us will be offering as well as an add-on. So, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, you won't want to miss that. It's going to be really a lot of fun. And it's going to, there's going to be an event um, along with that on May 8th. We will be demoing the projects. We will be showing you, I'm going to flip back to my, um, since I'm finished showing you that stuff. Uh, so there's also going to be a guest demonstrator uh, showing some fun projects. So it's going to be a whole event. It is not just a class in the mail. It is an event uh, that is virtual. So uh, you won't want to miss that. Um, okay. I'm just looking to see really quick if there were some questions that I needed to answer. But I'm really excited that you guys were enjoying those. And uh, thank you for joining me. I hope that you have a great week. I will be posting the video again on Thursday with more products that are being retired that you'll want to make sure you grab. I'm going to focus on stamp sets just because the stamp sets are a little less likely to be selling out than the products. However, I can't promise that I won't use retiring products just because I love them so much. And um, of course, we don't have our new products yet from our new catalog. So those are coming. I was able to pre-order some of those, and but I didn't expedite those just because I have plenty to do before that gets here. We have plenty to work on. Okay, so make sure you comment, make sure you share, um, let your friends know they might like some of the ideas that I shared tonight, and I appreciate you joining me. So take care. Have a great evening. God bless.